so this is a um, kind of a new video about um, what I'm going to talk about is this one keyboard I have gotten that most people haven't heard of. It's by a un very unheard of um, brand. I've never seen any really good reviews on it, so I wanted to describe a little bit about this keyboard and what's so nice about it and some of the disadvantages of this keyboard. So let me go ahead, take the camera here and show you the keyboard. Alright, got it. Maybe it'd be better if I lifted the keyboard. It's a Levitron Mech 4. So I'll lift the keyboard up so you can see it. But keep in mind my mouse is attached to it, so let me unplug my mouse. Alright. This is the keyboard. Now, this keyboard right here comes with QWERTY keys by default. It doesn't come with the Dwarf keys. I actually went to a, to a website, um, I think it's, uh, geez, I don't, I don't remember, but you can buy your own keycaps. So I bought a set of Devar keycaps for um, this keyboard, and um, I replaced the keys. I also um, got these green keys for, um, um, I guess it would be the ESDF group, which is one set over from WASD. Um, but I'm using Dvorak, so it's not even the ESDF, but it's one set over for what, what most people would know as the... Um, one step over from the WASD group. Um, so this keyboard is Dvorak, and let me tell you a little about it. First off, what's one thing that's nice about it, if you like to use the numpad, you can pop the numpad off. See, these... The numpad, well, actually, I'm not going to do it, but the numpad here can be taken off and put on this side of the keyboard, locked into place, and and be put on the right side of the keyboard. And I know some left-handed gang gamers really have wanted that feature and have been looking for a keyboard. Well, this is the keyboard for them. It's, again, the Levitron Mech 4. Um, so a little bit more about this keyboard. Every key can be defined as a macro um, with the software. The software is fairly decent, kind of, kind of not really polished as far as looks, but definitely functional and, and, and fairly well done. Um, so every key can be defined as a macro. It has um, the big dial you see up there is um, the volume knob for... And that's the only media key by um, default that is um, um, part of the keyboard. There are no media keys, so that's one thing that's lacking. Um, it has five um, dedicated macro keys that actually, with the switch of a button here, this is a, a, a kind of diagonally shaped button in that um, it has two buttons on one. Um, if you press this, it switches to an alternative set of macros. So, and then you press it back, it switches to the original. So it has two sets of macros that can be defined for these five keys. And it has this, which is, it will disable the Windows key for gaming, game playing and first person shooters. Um, last year I did a, um, um, a uh, video and I described my what I was using the Razor Tarantula. Well, that keyboard ended up dying on me, so I ended up getting a Razor Ultimate Stealth, and um, uh, it's a fairly nice keyboard too. But um, this, in every way, is probably the equal to that, except for the fact that it doesn't have backlighting, which is really just bling, if anything. Um, unless you play in the dark a lot, and I don't. Um, so, 
Um, you may also notice that last year I was describing a left-handed kind of um, gaming style that I thought would be the, the ultimate kind of um, uh, layout for gaming. And this year um, I switched back to the right-handed. I've given a lot of effort to try to become very decent or at least passable at um, left-handed gaming and I've only made limited progress. It's I found it always to be kind of a subtle kind of uh, psychologically frustrating experience to try to use the left hand being a right-hander and um, uh, for me, it's been difficult, but I've always wanted to try to um, um, improve myself in some way, and I thought that would be one way by learning to use left-handed um, setup. Uh, but really, if you're right-handed, it's much simpler to use um, a right-handed uh, setup. Now, some other things about this keyboard let me lift it up again, is it has this it has two USB ports here. Now one USB port is always taken up by this. This is another six macro keys that actually will um, can attach to the keyboard here, slide those on, and they can slide from here from here to here as you can see and this folds down over the function keys so it kind of takes away the function keys but you get six very easily reachable macro keys that can be positioned right above your gaming keys or anywhere you want if you want to change them um, but they do when they're down block the function keys so Keep that in mind if you're thinking about this keyboard or anything. Um, I also switched mouse mice. I got kind of one of the top of the line mice, the Razer um, MMO um, Razer, uh, or, or not the Razer. Pardon me. Forgive me, please. Um, the Cyborg um, uh, Rat Seven uh, MMO. Um, this is a fully adjustable mouse. Um, I thought, you know, I have fairly big hands. So unless I fully reach, put my hand on the mouse, and I don't always do that, I tend to reach from behind a little bit um, back further than I normally would if I was in, in, the, in the proper position. Well, when you do that, um, your hand doesn't feel like it's fully on the mouse. So no matter how far you adjust this back, it's never far enough. Um, and that's just me in kind of bad hand posture, so to speak. Um, but this is a very nice mouse. Um, 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 you may prefer Logitech or whatever. I know a lot of people still prefer the Logitechs. And I have had a Logitech very ergonomic, um, uh, very natural feel. I was thinking about actually getting, uh, taking a, taking the back end of this um, mouse here and making a few um, um, different sized um, palm rests that are not, e there's two other ones included with them the mouse. Well, I was thinking of getting an, an one that's totally not included, that's a little bit longer than all the others, and um, having that printed off with a 3D printing service. Um, but I've yet to do that. So, but, uh, so I just wanted to show you um, a, a keyboard that I thought would be an alternative to some keyboards. Um, a, a little more about the keyboard. All the keyboard, uh, the keyboard I think has uh, mechanical Cherry uh, MX blue switches, which are dedicated gaming switches. And um, I read a little bit about that. They, um, they're very good. They're they're non-tactile. Of all of all the mechanical switches, they're non-tactile. In other words, they um, they 
they don't have a definitive feeling as to when they're actuated. You, they just actuate when they're pressed, and um, y there's no definitive feeling behind that. But nevertheless, they, they are very good switches, and they're actually fairly decent for um, typing, too, though um, they they are not quite as light as, say, the Cherry MX Red switches or some of the other um, mechanical switches. Um, the blue switches are very good for double tapping and things like that. And also, I've found that I've had I've had very little bounce in that I've ve I've very rarely accidentally double tapped with a bounce. You know, it's when the key will bounce um, off the bottom and actuate again, even though the person didn't intend to do that. Some mechanical key switches do that. Well, I've never had that be an issue, so I don't think anyone else probably would have much of an issue with that um, and the blue switches I think are better for they don't do that but so um, thank you for watching and as to the troll that kind of spurred me to um, to do this video well you know <laughs> trolls will be trolls haters will be haters and you know you can't do anything about it I'll talk to you later. Bye.